ladies and gentlemen, attendees and participants, and welcome to the February 14th meeting of the City of Tampa Variance Review Board, which I think we've all concluded is the most romantic variance review board we've ever attended. Um, from my left, the members of the board are? Una Johnson. Sam Decker. Brett Feldman. Aaron Murphy. Also in attendance this evening, we have Susan Johnson Velez from Legal. We have, uh, we have uh, Jane Madu from Development Coordination, along with Mary Tavares from Natural Resources. We have Stephen Eister, and I did not see Jonathan Scott from Transportation. Um, there are some procedural rules you will need to follow this evening. When your case number and petitioner name is called, please approach the podium. When you approach the podium, please state your name, address, and if you have been sworn in. Um, the petitioner and or their agent will have 10 minutes to make a presentation. All other persons or participants wishing to speak will have three minutes, and then the petitioner will have an additional five minutes for rebuttal if needed. Time periods, as stated, will be kept by the board. Any information, such as pictures or plans, that have not previously been submitted as part of your petition and you intend to present at this hearing for consideration in support of your petition must be individually presented and accepted by the board. After acceptance by the board, you must submit the item to staff to be entered and made part of the permanent record. The board bases its decisions on competent and substantial evidence which is presented and which meets the criteria required by the city's code of ordinances. Please be sure to state clearly your hardship criteria during your presentation. A majority of the board is needed to approve your variance. The variance granted by the board will be only for what is shown on the site plan and will need to be in compliance with any terms and conditions stated in the approval by the board. All other city codes will need to be met. If the case is approved, your variance will expire two years from the day of the decision. If the case is continued, it will be continued to either next month's VRB board agenda or the next available position on an upcoming VRB board agenda. If the case is denied, you may wish to have the Variance Review Board's decision appealed by the City Council. Uh, to do so, you must file a petition for review of the Board's decision within 14 days of the written decision. You will not be able to pull any permits until after the 14 days review period has passed. Your cooperation in ensuring that this meeting is run smoothly is greatly appreciated. Can I have a meeting, can I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the January uh, VRB meeting. I'll move to approve the minutes for the January VRB meeting. Uh, do I have a second? second? Awesome. All those in favor of approval say aye. Any opposed? Great. Uh, approval of the meeting minutes has passed. At this time, I'll ask legal staff to confirm whether there are any ex parte communications or conflicts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, at this time, I would ask the board members if they've had any ex parte communications with respect to any matter on the agenda this evening, if you would disclose those. Hearing none, I would now ask if uh, any board member has a conflict of interest with, with respect to any matter on the agenda this evening. Yes, um, I have a conflict with respect to VRB 23-07. Um, the company I work for represents the applicant. Okay, thank you. And I have provided you the form for some of that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, uh, at this time, uh, will staff address any changes to the agenda? We have uh, only three. We have a quorum, correct. Okay. Well. Um, Do we expect any? I don't know what the story is with um, Ms. Wallerath. Okay. Well, do you want to, well, I guess we have two choices here. We can either continue VRB 2307 to the next available meeting or we can push it to the end this evening and see what happens. Is the applicant here for 2307? Would you come forward, please? So, so I think, oh, I'm sorry. You wanna, you yes, I, I think you've heard our discussions. Yeah. We only have four board members. One has a conflict yes. and will not be able to participate in the, um, yes. in the vote. And so. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Appreciate that. The, uh, <laughs> so your options, as the chair just outlined, we could either move you to the back of the agenda and hope maybe another board member will um, oh, here's Ms. Walden, oh, here. Ooh, look at that, see? Thank you so much. I think so we much. just solved it. We, just, we, we timed it out well. <laughs> yeah. All right, so no worries, we're no worries. okay. I think I'll wait, yes. Okay. <laughs> you made our quorum because uh, Sam is a conflict with the first one. So it works out beautifully. Good job, welcome. 
Okay, well, let's try that again. Does staff have any other changes to the agenda we wish to address? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, do we? Yeah, there was one. Okay. Do we need to move that? And that the uh, March date would be March 14th? Okay, do we have uh, a motion to move BRB 22-102 uh, located at 3701 West Oklahoma Avenue to the March 14th, 2023 uh, at 530 here in Dayton? I so move. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Terrific. Uh, all those in favor of moving BRB 22-102 to the March 14th, 2023 at 530 hearing date, say aye. Any opposed? None. All right. Motion passes. Um, at this time, I would ask staff uh, to conduct the swearing in and for the folks in our audience, if you plan to speak tonight, if you might speak tonight, if there's a chance that you might have to say a few words this evening, please stand and be sworn so that we don't have to do it again when that opportunity arises for you. All right. Terrific. Uh, are we going to do that first? Or do you want to do that at the end? It doesn't specify. Whatever the board's pleasure. If you all would. Why don't we get these folks out of here? <laughs> it's, right. it's Valentine's Day and they don't need to sit around for that. Right. Okay. So we'll, we'll hold board elections at the end of this meeting. Uh, you want to call VRB 23-07 at this time? Well, no, this is the Oh, this is the one we need to fix something yeah, on? Yeah, the motion, um, the, the request is to review the radar set back from 20 feet to 5 feet and the vehicle and from 10 feet to 7 feet. The motion says reduce from 10 feet to 5 feet, so we need to correct that. Okay, so the motion that we had, do you recall who made the motion? Yes, it was um, Sam. Okay, so we had, a, we had an, uh, an oopsie in the language of our motion um, to reduce the rear. What was the, to, what was the vote on that? Uh, do we need, we don't need a re-vote on it, do we? So that's, that's the problem is without a, a, a refresher on how we voted um, for, I did not bring my notes from the last hearing, so I don't recall. I have. So this is, we're talking about uh, 2304. Okay, terrific. All right, that's that's an excellent, excellent thing. So if you want to um, restate the motion based on the language that's here, then we can all um, reapprove it as we did the last time. Um, so, sorry, one point of clarification. I'm looking at the meeting minutes from January, and it looks like the request was to reduce the rear yard setback from 10 feet to 6 feet and the vehicular entrance from 10 feet to 7 feet. That is slightly different than what the request is on the agenda. Uh, the motion? I, I'm minutes. looking at the minutes. Oh, the minutes? But if, if, if we're confident that the agenda is correct, then I'll, I'll base my motion on that. Yeah, it, it would be 
So did we approve it from 20 feet to 6 feet or from 20 feet? It's supposed to be from 20 to, from 20 to 6 because he, he amended his motion to 6 feet. Okay, that's helpful. All right, so 20 feet to 6 feet. What he noticed was about 5 feet. Okay. Where at the hearing, he said it could be 6 feet. I recall okay. that, yes. And then the vehicular entrance setback from 10 feet to 7 feet is accurate. Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. So the motion will be from 20 to 6. Okay. All right. I move that the <coughs> variance request for case BRB 23-04 for property located at 7102 South Shamrock Road be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 6 feet and a reduction of the vehicular entrance setback from 10 feet to 7 feet based upon the reasons set forth in my motion made on January 10th, 2023. Excellent. Great. All right. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, uh, say aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Awesome. All right. Correct. All right. Good evening. first case before the board is VRB 2207. This is addressed at 4202 and 4204 North 15th Street. This is zoned SHRS, Seminole Heights Residential Single Family. And the property owner is JVJO Holdings LLC. The variance request is to remove three grand trees for the construction of new single family residences. Code section in reference to section 27-284.2.5 that has the requirements for the <coughs> removal of grand tree um, uh, applications and um, the criteria for the decision. This is a site plan that the applicant provided showing us those, um, the two property um, in question, three lots um, spread across three, um, across both properties, lot four, lot five, and lot six. <coughs> this is uh, a corner lot and an interior lot in the central Tampa planning district. This is uh, what the applicant is proposing for construction. They provided um, three, uh, three alternative plans for each of the um, new single family residences they, that they are proposing to put on these three lots. And we have pictures of the trees in question, trees that are existing. The tree on the left is towards the uh, front of lot four. This tree is stained, it's not going out that's the tree on the left the tree on the right is towards the rear that is they are looking to take that tree out and then um, these are two the, the tree on the left the tree in the middle are considered for removal and the tree to the right is being preserved this was reviewed by right of way and found consistent natural resources found then inconsistent, however, he has provided an updated memo. Um, transportation found them consistent with the following comments. Transportation has no objections to the requested variance. However, please review, revise the following on the site plan when you go to construction services for permitting on this project. One, please show the location of two paid parking spaces Two, please remove the abandoned driveways and pave the new driveway aprons with concrete in the right of way. This was also reviewed by the urban design um, department and found consistent. We received no letters of support or objection for this variance request. And um, the memo from natural resources has been provided to the board. In the determination of the variance requ request before you, the board shall consider section 27-284.2 five as the criteria for the approval or denial of the removal of a grand tree. If you have any questions, Stephen Eister is available. Alright. Um, yeah. yeah, did you want to speak about your updated memo in the spreadsheet? 
Stephen Eister, Natural Resources, I have been sworn in. And um, just some things to bring up on in the memo. The client did apply for a formal decision to try to reconfigure lot five and six to face East North Bay Street. Um, that was denied due because it doesn't fit the layout of the community. The other thing, um, this is a site plan here. Let's see if I can zoom out. So right now these lots are together. That's why they're kind of here. Um, but lot four, five, and six, when they're separated, um, they qualify what's called a tree removal zone lot. They're 50 by 100. Um, the trees highlighted in pink would actually fall in that zone. Um, the tree in orange requires a variance, um, just like the, other, the ones in the pink do. And then the one in the green is kind of the reason for my inconsistency on lot six. Because they are in similar heights, they can reduce the front setback. Um, right now it's currently at 40. Um, they can either do block averaging or a design exception to reduce that front setback to preserve that tree. Um, and that kind of covers all the comments in my memo. And I'm available if you have any questions. Okay. Did you have a question? I was just, could you just briefly say the pink and the orange again? Like what, so, what made them different? So the pink, if when these lots are separated, they qualify as tree removal zone lots. Uh, so okay. the, the trees in pink, the tree removal zone is kind of set up like this. Um, I don't know if you've guys seen this diagram. It's kind of funky. But this is the side setback plus five feet. And then anything within that is the tree removal zone. This tree here is about 16 feet in. And then this one is about 15. Okay. So they would both fall in that zone. But all three need a variance. Yeah, regardless. right now, because right. it's all one thing. But I think there's a certification letter in there that does allow the split. OK. All right, um, if the applicant wants to come up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn, and you'll have 10 minutes to make a presentation. Good evening. My name is Jeremy Vanderloop. I have been sworn. Uh, I live at 1207 East Norfolk Street in Tampa, Florida, a long-term resident of Seminole Heights for 12 years. This is actually my operations manager as well. I'm Brian Potter. I've been sworn in. I live at 415 East Hamilton Avenue in um, Seminole Heights, north in Tampa, Florida. So, um, there was a couple uh, great things that we've actually been working on with this site. Uh, as staff reported, we attempted to try to pivot the lots, which hit zoning requirements, everything was needed. Um, uh, while we were doing that, they found out that it was not consistent with the original plat on that specific block, even though there were other houses that were facing in the same direction. That was initially to try to avoid as many trees as possible, as um, you know, we, we do live in the neighborhood and we. We, uh, you know, our kids live there, all that stuff. And so we were actually able to split the lot. So there are three lots now. Um, so it has been completed. And then this week I uh, was reviewing it and I wanted to put my iPad up here. We actually already did a block average and found out the BTL um, initially presented by our design team. Uh, they missed it. And so after review, that would be the new. So we were able to fully get out of lot six. Um, tree, which is one of the larger, um, more beautiful trees that would provide a nice uh, aesthetic for the, the new home owner. Um, the other trees, um, there's basically two trees in review that they're both, the two that are in review, the one that we've gotten a, from an arborist uh, to remove is a C9. Um, it's in the middle of the lots and they said that can just be removed. After reviewing the arborist report a little more in detail, the two in question are actually a C C8, so they're right on the cusp as well. And um, what we're planning on doing here is trying to create more of like an attainable housing um, here. So the, these three homes are not going to be the standard, you know, six hundred thousand dollar homes. They're going to be more like the three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollar homes, more on the first time home buyer affordability here within Tampa. You know, as Tampa's changed, 
And so we're, we're adamantly just trying to really work within this lot. Uh, I've suggested multiple things to my design teams and they keep kicking back at me saying it's not feasible. Um, and their main concern was just how close they do come into the lots, um, that there's just no feasible way to really avoid the root systems um, safely. And, uh, and so that's, that's my presentation with it. Brian, if you want to add anything. You hit all the points. I mean, um, we have already been able to successfully split the lots into three separate lots. And, um, and we're able to save that one tree on lot six and the front tree um, that Jane already pointed out to you guys. So, um, yeah, yeah this is our first good. time doing a variance review. So um, we appreciate you guys serving to on Valentine's Day. Um, thank you so much. But that's it. petition this evening seeing none uh, any questions by the board for the applicant or staff I have a question for staff real quick um, who approves the division of lots what is it planning I'm not sure what application, but sometimes a lot certification application would go through um, the development and growth management department. So if, if the lots are going back to what they were originally platted as, and they are in any of the overlay districts, Seminole Heights is one of our special districts, they can do that through a certification letter. But if they're changing the, or reconfiguring the way the lots were originally platted, they have to go through a formal decision that gets approved by the zoning supervisor. Okay, I was but, just curious. But we already have in our file um, uh, approval that the lot split has occurred, so that's in so our. The, yeah, the lot split, they, they went back to what they were originally platted as, so yeah. Okay, and and um, Mr. Eister, I just had one one last question, just to make sure I'm I'm on the same page. The trees that are being removed are two of the trees in lot four and one of the trees in lot five is that accurate that is accurate okay so it's the two pink and the orange and the green in lot six is being preserved by moving the correct uh, the home forward correct okay any other questions well i've got you up there now that it's been truly divided into three lots it looks like they all fall in the trz yeah i would meaning no matter what we vote either way, he will be legally allowed to remove the trees, correct? Correct, but with the process with um, lots five and four, with all that combined when they first started, that's kind of how it got here. Um, and it, it still does kind of simplify the process moving forwards. Um, the TRZ process is... So if, they, if we happen to approve this variance, it is a simplified process versus them going back, applying for the TRZ, which they would get approved anyways. Cool. That is correct. Thank you. Well, that clears up for me, doesn't it? Okay. Um, any other questions from the board uh, for anyone in the audience or anyone on the application? No? Nope. Seeing none. All right. You have five minutes for rebuttal, should you choose to use it. Appreciate you guys. Uh, we're trying the best we can to, you know, keep our neighborhood nice. And so, thank you guys for consideration. All right. Um, do I have a motion then to? Uh, with that, I'll close the public hearing. Open it up for a motion from the board to um, address the petition. All right. I move that the variance request for case VRB. 23-07 for property located at 4202 and 4204 North 15th Street be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for removal of a grand tree based upon the petitioner meeting the burden of proof with regard to the six factors for determining tree removal as set forth in section 27-284.2.5F4 
of the city code for granting tree removal, specifically that the evidence provided in the record showed these trees are falling within the new TRZ zones, the tree removal zones, now that the lots have been split into three lots and uh, they, their current location would not allow for the intended use of the lots. All right, we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. Any opposed? You're approved. Have a great evening. Thank you guys so much. Happy Valentine's Thank you. about to send somebody to go get you. Right, this takes us to VRB 2301. Correct. The next case before the board is VRB 2301, addressed at 8413 North, not Ola Avenue. This is zone RS50, residential single family. The, oh, did I go? Oh. Not yet. <laughs> Just messing with. <laughs> All right. So, um, property address at eight four one three North Ola Avenue, zone RS fifty residential single family, and the property owners are Lazaro Hernandez and the applicant is Mariela Acosta. The variance request before the board is to reduce the rear yard setback from twenty feet to four feet and one inch, and the north side yard setback from seven feet to six feet and reduce the eave to eave separation from five feet to two feet for an existing crop court. This is work that was done without permits. And the purpose is for an existing addition to a single family residence and for an existing crop court. The code section in reference is section 27-156 that has the table, um, that has the schedule of area height bulk and placement for the RS50 zoning district as 20 feet for the front, 20 feet on the rear, and seven feet on the sides. And section 27-291A3, that has the minimum separation of five feet between principal and accessory structures measured E to E. This is the subject property, which is an interior lot in the USF Institutional Planning District. It is in the um, highlighted orange um, box. And this is a site plan showing um, the existing conditions on the on the property. We have the crop port shown um, towards the north end, and then the addition to the single family structure towards the northeast portion of this property. Uh, this was uh, this is an active code enforcement case. This was reviewed by natural resources and found consistent with conditions with the comments that at the time of permitting, the lot shall have 25% green space, and um, they have requirements for um, green space calculations put in there in their comments as well. Transportation reviewed them and reviewed and found them consistent, uh, with the comments that transportation has no objections to the variance request. However, during construction permitting, the driveway will need to comply with the City of Tampa transportation technical standards. Um, right of way reviewed and found them consistent with no comments. These are the floor plans that have been provided for the addition to the single family residence. It is an outdoor kitchen and they are showing the floor plans and elevations as it currently exists. We receive no letters of objection or support for this variance request and staff has not provided any memos. In the determination of the various requests before you, the board shall consider section 27-80, um, the criteria for the approval or denial of the variance request. If you have any questions, I will be available. Okay. Um, all right, applicant, come on up. Uh, state your name, your address, confirm for us that you've been sworn. And then you'll have 10 minutes to explain to us your hardships and uh, why we should approve your petition. Good afternoon. My name is Mariela Costa. I live in 8413 North Ola Avenue, Tampa, Florida, 33603. Uh, and and I, I, sorry. Perfect. 
Yes. Uh, also, here is my husband with me. He is Lazaro Manri, also on the application. And I did provide the pictures that I sent how it looks, the carpet that is listed on the seat that's wait. Okay. My house, we bought this house back in 2018. It's a brand new house. And when we bought it, we got three little childs. We got three uh, kids. And we make the decision to buy this boat. It's a 2020 Yamaha. And of course, we are making payment on, on the boat. And they recommend us to put it in the place where it can be safe. And we didn't know that we have to um, ask permission for a carport. And we did put it without a permission. That's what I'm asking you uh, for reduce the rear seat back of the house. Oh, that's the other one right here, out of kitchen. I'm sorry about that. Here. The 20 to 4.1. And the north side, it's the one for the carpet. This is what it looks like right here. It's everything over. This is another one. And this is the front right here that it has a fence and If you guys has any question. Okay. Um, does that complete your presentation this evening? Um, I'm sorry, I get nervous when no, I no, talk English. No, no, it's okay, English. and I understand it's <laughs> My it's, first language is Spanish, and I feel comfortable. You ask me a question, and I can uh, respond. But yeah, that's basically what we need uh, with the carpet. It's because the boat. I don't have any other place in my house. I don't, I don't have a space to put the boat. That's the only side of my house where I can put it on. And the carport is just to protect the boat. With the outdoor kitchen, it was a pre-assistant right here. And you can see the 24, 20 and it has to go down to 4.1 to meet the um, the requ requirement right here this space I don't know much about measurements and okay um, so it's helpful uh, those pictures are very helpful um, and it looks lovely uh, can you explain to us, um, starting with uh, what existed when you bought the house, confirm for us, it sounds like you're saying you added the carport and the kitchen, uh, the outdoor kitchen cover. Uh, did the outdoor kitchen exist beforehand? No, it was not existing. I'm going to put here this way. Okay. This is the house, and right here is the carport. My house at the beginning was only to this proper line right here. Okay. So we did make the addition for the outdoor kitchen that we submit the plans right here. It was for the outdoor kitchen and the plans that Jane present at the beginning. So we did make the addition without a permit, and when we uh, try to uh, legalize, then they ask us to do a variance because it was out of the seat bags from the house yeah. perimeters. Okay. Um, might be easiest, I think you've given us a lot of information, might be easiest if we, if we um, let anyone else ask, uh, speak about this, if there's anyone in the audience, then we can ask some questions and address it that way. Yeah, sure. Okay. So let's, let's do this. Um, is there any, anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition this evening? All right, seeing none. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions for the petitioner? I can start if we need to. You have one? Okay, go ahead, fire away. Uh, just for staff, I'm looking at this, we're asking for a side setback reduction down to six feet, but I see the existing carport's only 3.1 feet. 
or three, sorry, three feet, seven inches, does that, does so that, should that be the new reduction? Is for the addition to the wear of the, of the property? Okay. The, the it's just for the kitchen. kitchen. Yes. So the carport does not matter. That's okay. That's within well, code. The carport is meeting the setback, so it's not meeting the separation. Okay. It has to be at least five feet and it's at three feet. Okay. But it's a, that's the metal carport. Correct. Okay. I mean, I would defer to the design experts on our, uh, as to whether there's a need for separation. Um, there's always a need for separation for if there's good reasons for it or we would, you know, well, be required, but. <clears throat> let's let's do it having. this way. Are there any questions that you have that would impact um, your thoughts on the separation, um, materials, uh, keeping in mind that we're going to have to meet um, city code uh, approvals. Understood. I just, just because you want a boat doesn't mean you get a car. Okay. So my my issue with this has nothing to do with the materials. Okay. So. Fair enough. Um, tell us if you would please. There was an existing carport in the back. It's listed as a carport, but it looks like it covers the hot tub. Uh, the hot tub. No, no, no. That is a jacuzzi. Okay. Yeah, it was not existing. So that carport uh, that's listed in the back. Are you talking about this right here? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, this is not the one that we are talking. We are talking about this one. Right, but... But, but this one, it's a movable, mo it's something movable. Like, you can move it. Uh, this is not on the ground. This is a jacuzzi, yeah. and that is just to cover the jacuzzi. Okay, but that, so that cover for the jacuzzi is not, a, well, let me ask the city, let me ask our staff a question here. We have a cumulative issue here with, with the accessories and the additions, is that correct? Yes. Right? Okay. Um, and that's based upon the total square footage of what we have well, added. This, this addition is connected to the principal structure, so right. it's technically not um, an Main structure, structure anyway. It's main structure. Okay. okay. And that's for the new outdoor kitchen in the rear. Correct. Right. Um, but the new outdoor kitchen in the rear is going to require, will that require any adjustment to the um, north side setback if, if we're just looking at that in exclusion of anything else? Well, the, the north side um, setback is at six feet, so uh, that's not bad, but on the east is 4.1. So that's where, I mean, that's the, the rear side. The rear side, right. 4.1. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so you said this new outdoor kitchen, it's connected to the it's principal structure. The principal structure. So, so, if it, so it has to meet principal structure setback. So if it wasn't, it looks like it's maybe eight foot, nine foot away from the principal structure. Would that eat to eat be okay? Well, I'm trying to figure. That's where the cumulative comes in. Yeah. I know. Yes. Well, yeah, then we have that. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, so if this were not connected, it would be meeting accessory structure setback. Um, and I, I'm, I don't know how we would look at the movable uh, pool that, you know. Yeah. Would, um, I'm just trying to figure out options. Um, right. it, well, it has a roof over it. So the jacuzzi can move, but the roof does not. Well, that, I was going to oh. ask that question because I don't, I mean, is, is the roof attached? The roof over the jacuzzi, is that lodged into the ground or is that movable as well? It's movable. The jacuzzi is movable. But the roof... It, the structure over it, is it... Oh, no. You are looking that if it's connected? No. The, so keep your finger right where it was. Right here. Right there, yes. That, that structure the wood and roof, is that is that anchored into the ground or is it movable? It's movable. So you could pick it up and move it? Yes. Okay. You want, can he say something? I mean, he's trying to tell me something. Well, is it an answer to the question? ¿Vas a responder alguna pregunta? Porque este, esa explica que te lo venden en coco como para tapar eso, pero que si está agarrado al concreto, se puede mover, pero está agarrado al concreto. Okay. Uh, he doesn't speak English, I'm sorry. That's he okay. says that um, this right here, we bought it at Costco, and it's 
support to the ground, but it's not something that it's like a standing that you cannot move it. You can move it. Okay. Got it. It's just to cover the pool. Uh, okay. Any other questions from the board? I, I have a, just a question about the survey. So um, Mr. Murphy asked about the setbacks um, on the north side and the outdoor kitchen on the survey, I'm seeing that it shows that it's five feet, three inches. Is that, why, what is that five? That's, that's looks like it's oh, okay. six three got to it. the actual okay. structure. Okay, got it, got it, okay. okay. That answers. Um. Okay. Um, you have uh, five minutes uh, to share with us anything else you want to share with us um, as it relates to uh, the hardships, why you need to have the structures where you have them, why you need to have the amount of structures that you have, all those things to address anything that we've said, asked, or anything else that you want to talk about. Yeah, um, basically it's uh, what you see, the, um, the outdoor kitchen, the roof is continued to the house, so it's attached to the house. It's not a separation. We talk, when we submit the variance, we talk uh, with the neighbors around, and I come to them and ask them a specific question, if, if they have any type of issue or something before we came, and... They say no, and I just give you thanks for your time, and whatever decision you guys make, it will be appreciated. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, with that, uh, I'll close the public hearing and open it up for a uh, motion from the board or discussion of meeting. There's an awful lot going on on this site. Yeah, I'm having a hard time even trying to sort it out, um, a good solution. I, I know each site is separate, but we've had cases before us where people wanted a cover for a boat, and um, we generally decided that that was kind of a self-imposed hardship. Well, let me ask you a question then, um, just on a hypothetical basis. Uh, if the cover for the boat were mm -hmm. not there mm -hmm. and not part of the address, uh -huh. would you consider approval of the outdoor kitchen setbacks um, in and of itself. You mean because of the problem with the eve to eve separation not being there or? Well, the eve to eve is exclusive for the carport. So that would go away. Well, the, that, that one concerns uh, me the most is because this setback that we approved stays with the property. So if someone were to buy it, not you know sell it, buy it, mm -hmm. they could build a full structure to those new setbacks. Well, only as it relates to the site plan. Right. right, so they could rebuild to this site plan. Are you concerned that they would enclose it and make it part of the main structures? And it's, because it's, it's attached to the house. Yeah. Like, that's the problem I have with it. It's like, it's, it's attached. So we're, we have to treat this as a full house now. <laughs> and I don't, that makes me a little worried. And a very full lot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, keeping that in mind, would, would you feel more comfortable if it were never enclosed, if it, you know, was this sort of outdoor, airy kitchen forever? Well, that's why I was asking the question, if it wasn't attached to the house, it would need accessory um, structure setbacks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it sort of feels like an accessory structure because it's you know open and it's outdoors so i'd rather approve it as an accessory structure than i would as part of the house it is what i'm saying but i don't know if i can you know that's something that's a big decision i don't know i can't but make those design changes for no, I, you know so yeah, I, there's I, just I a lot going on and there are major things that need to be reshuffled i yeah. guess i mean we yeah. can we can uh, consult with legal on that, but my understanding is that we do not have authority to make design changes. Right, right, of course. Well, and if they were to, you know, just cut off the attachment to the house, then it would be an accessory structure and they wouldn't need it. Right. right, so, so. Uh, if 
buy in well, going to well, not have, approve something, I want to make sure they have another route to look at, I guess. Um, that's what I'm kind of trying to get at. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's do it this way. Um, we need a motion, one way or the other. Um, my suggestion was simply, um, it appears that there might be an opportunity to bifurcate. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we do need a motion. Does anyone want to take a shot at some combination of motion? Um, I'm happy to make a motion, but um, I think that I would want to bring the applicant back up and ask if they were okay with a condition. Okay, do we have a motion to open uh, the public hearing to ask a question to the applicant? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay, let's open up the public hearing. Uh, we have a question for you. Yes. Um, so I understand that the outdoor kitchen is open. There are no walls on it. No. Um, would you agree to a condition that you are never allowed to put walls? You're never allowed to enclose that kitchen. Make it an air-conditioned space. Uh, in other words, um, can't close it in, make it air conditioned space as part of the house. It can remain, you could screen it if you needed to, but you can't um, close it up so that it's not an outdoor kitchen, it would be an indoor kitchen. Yes, can I translate that to him very quick? Of course. Ellos nos están diciendo que nos van a dar la oportunidad de mantenerlo si prometemos y va a estar firmado que eso nunca se va a cerrar, que va a ser todo el tiempo una cocina abierta. Only, only, only on site it's an outdoor kitchen, yeah. we will never close it. Okay. Um, all right. Does Legal have a question? Oh, I just wanted to ask too. I'm. Um, I know the board has. There have been a lot of comments about how full this site is, and there's a lot of paving on it. And so I wondered if you want, if in your motion you wanted to include the natural resources comment about the 25% um, green space. That isn't that going to have to well, be met. They'll, they'll have yes. to do that up front. Right. So regardless of what we do, they're going to have to meet the 25% okay. space, percent just, green space. Yeah. Um, okay, um, since we asked you a question, you get uh, an opportunity for rebuttal. Um, should you need to say anything else about this issue or anything else, you have some time if you want to. ¿Tú quieres decir o preguntar algo extra? No, just thank you. Okay, all right, I will reclose the public hearing now um, and again open it up for a motion from the board. I can make a motion. All right. I move that the variance request for case BRB 23-01 for property located at 8413 North Ola Avenue for a reduction of the rear yard setback from 20 feet to four feet one inches and the north yard setback from seven feet to six inches and, sorry, six feet, seven feet to six feet, and a reduction of the eave to eave separation from five feet to two feet for an existing carport with an encroachment for eaves and gutters. Um, be granted with the following conditions that the outdoor kitchen um, never be enclosed, that said variance as condition be granted based upon the applicant presenting competent substantial evidence in the record and that this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that um, the variance will result in um, substantial justice being done. Um, the outdoor kitchen um, but for the fact that it's connected to the residence would meet accessory structure setbacks and the um, eve to eve separation on the carport um, is you know relatively minimal the uh, materials that the carport is made of are not you know flammable um, and um, you know there are other conditions that the city will impose specifically that um, you know, twenty five percent of the property be green space um, to mitigate some of the sort of congestion that's appearing on the site plan. Okay, we have a motion to approve with conditions. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion.
motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. The next case before the board is BRB 2310, addressed at 8535 Sand Piper Ridge Avenue. This is zone PDA, Plan Development Alternative. The, prop, the applicant is David Kramer, and uh, the property owner is David Kramer. Um, David and Irma Kramer, let us say. Um, the variance request is to reduce the radar setback from nine feet two inches to 3.2 feet and this is for a screen porch the code section in reference to section 27 137387i i that has the dimensional changes for individual lots within a larger development being determined by the vrb this is the site plan that the applicant has provided showing us the existing property and um in the south end, we see the proposed addition um, proposed where, um, in the hatch. That is where he's looking to put in um, the screen porch, measured at 20 feet by 6 feet. Uh, and that setback reduction to 3.2 feet. This was reviewed by natural resources and found consistent with conditions that they um, meet all the natural resources uh, code and um, requirements at the time of permitting. This was reviewed by uh, right of way and found consistent with no comments. Transportation review was not required. Is a picture sh that the, um, the owner has provided showing the property as it currently exists and this is where they're looking to put in the new um, screen enclosure. Staff has received no letters of support or objection for this variance request. And um, the reviewers have provided no memos. In the determination of the variance request before you, the board shall consider section 27-80, a criteria for the approval or denial of the variance request. If you have any questions, I will be available. All right, thank you very much. Is the applicant here for 23-10? Yes. Come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn and you'll have 10 minutes to make your presentation. All right. Name is David J. Kramer. Address is 20226 Mary Oak Avenue, Tampa 33647. Uh, I did not get here in time to get sworn. Okay. Is there so anyone else in the audience who still needs to be sworn? Sorry. That's all right. I do. That is why we ask people to confirm, I guess. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, you have 10 minutes, please, to explain to us the hardships. Uh, yes, uh, my wife and I bought this townhouse for our grandson and his family to, uh, to occupy. Uh, at the time we bought it, it had need of a lot of interior repairs. It had been trashed by a previous occupant. But what we liked about the place was that it backs up to a conservation area. And when we, when we went out the back door, we saw that the neighboring unit has a six foot deep by about approximately 20 foot long screen porch back there facing the uh, conservation area. And we said, this is a good thing if we can do this. So we asked our realtor to find out if we could do the same thing in this unit. And he did some checking, came back and said, yes, you can do that. In fact, the other three units in this building have the same feature. So uh, early last year, we contacted an aluminum company, Anderson Aluminum, who we dealt with before, asked them for a proposal 
they wrote a proposal, we liked the proposal, we gave them a deposit, then we went to the homeowners association to get approval of this addition before going any further. The homeowners association came back in about six weeks and approved it, so we told Anderson to go ahead and, and uh, request the building permit. And a few weeks later, we got a call from them saying that the city denied the request for the permit because there's a 10-foot setback requirement. That kind of blew our minds because the building is not 10 feet from the property line right now. It's 9.2 feet from the property line. And the other three units in the same building have the same construction of a screen porch in the back. So we were, we're, we're kind of flummoxed. So that's why we're applying for the variance uh, to be able to, to build this screen porch and, and improve the, the value of this townhome and keep it basically consistent with the other three units in this same building. Does that complete your presentation this evening? Yes. Terrific. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition this evening? Seeing none, questions from the board? Uh, one quick question. So. The measurements of your screen porch are going to match the ones of the other three units in this property? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Um, I have a question maybe for legal. Should we, like, do we need to vest the unit since it appears to encroach into the setbacks? Or, or we heard some testimony that it might encroach into the setbacks? So um, this, this property is in New Tampa? And that is an area that went through an area-wide rezoning. That's why it's a PDA. So the PDA sets for what the setbacks should be. And sometimes when they build, because this is like mass development, yeah. it doesn't meet, some of them don't really meet that setback. Um, and sometimes it slips through inspection. So even though the, um, the development plan says it's supposed to be at 10 feet, what it was built to was nine and something. So we don't really need any vesting of that. Um, okay. Can you confirm for us, uh, I mean, it, you're making a screened enclosure. Can you confirm for us that it's going to be your intent to enclose that with walls, make it air-conditioned space, that it will remain screened but unenclosed in terms of uh, air-conditioned space? I can confirm that. Terrific. Um, and you'd be okay with that as a condition? Absolutely. Terrific. Any other questions? Seeing none, you have five minutes for rebuttal, should you choose to use it. I have none. Okay. Then I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion um, from the board. I'll do it. Great. <laughs> um, okay. I move that the variance request for case BRB 23-10 for a property located at 8535 Sam Piper Ridge Avenue uh, be granted as depicted on the site plan presented for a public, at the public hearing for a rear yard uh, reduction from nine foot two inches to 3.2 feet based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in 27-80 of the city code, specifically that this covered porch matches pretty much most of the development um, standards that have already have exactly similar porches that are screened in. Um, it will never be enclosed and will become an asset to the community. Um, so never being closed, is that a condition of the motion? Is that a condition of your motion that it never be enclosed? I guess so. I thought it was part of the screened in I mean, That makes sense, right? But I think if we're going to make it, uh, it's up to you as to whether you want to make it a condition to your motion. Just say with the condition that it never be enclosed. 
Oh, can I? I don't have to start over. No. no. Oh, that's great. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to add a condition to that motion that the screened in porch never be enclosed or be air conditioned space. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second with a condition. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? You're approved. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Things where it's like All right. the last case before the board the board tonight is VRB 2312 and the property address is 3613 West Palmyra Avenue this is zoned RS 100 residential single family and the applicant is Michael Loomis the variance request is to reduce the radar set back from 20 feet to 10 feet and the east side yard set back from seven feet to 5.5 feet for an addition to an existing single family residence. The code section in reference is section 27-156 that has the schedule of area, height, bulk, and placement for the RS100 zoning district as 25 feet for the front, 12 feet for the rear, 15 on the corner, and seven feet on the sides. This is uh, a site plan that the applicant has provided showing us the existing structure and the proposed addition, which is highlighted in pink. This is an interior lot in South Tampa Planning District. They are looking to reduce that rear yard setback from 20 feet to 10 feet and the side yard setback from seven to 5.5. This was reviewed by natural resources and found inconsistent with technical standards and code with the comment that the new addition is impacting off-site off -site and shared trees and uh, requested that the applicant provide the following documentation. The city of Tampa tree rate form, an authorized neighbor form to impact or remove the trees along the east property line. This was reviewed by transportation, found consistent with no comments, and right of way reviewed and found them consistent with no comments as well. And the applicant provided pictures showing the area of work and um, the existing home in aerial and then the front view of the property as well. We received no letters of objection or support for this variance request. The board shall consider section 27-80 as the criteria for the approval or denial of the variance request. If you have any questions, I would be available. Okay, uh, applicant, you wanna come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you have been sworn, and uh, explain to us what you're gonna do, what your hardships are. Sure, good evening. I am Mike Loomis, 3613 West Palmyra Ave. I have been sworn in, this is my wife. I'm Maria Kuzmich, 3613 West Palmyra, and I've been sworn as well. Great job, thank you. All right, um, I heard one thing at the end, so I forgot to start with that. Uh, we do have letters uh, that was actually submitted, and I do have two neighbors here that are in support of what we're asking for, but this is my closest neighbor to the east, so I do have this, and it was submitted, but I can also give a copy at some point in time. Um, the other thing that came up in topic was the trees. I do have my letters of risk assessment from my arborist on the two trees that were in question. So these will be submitted at time of permitting or can be done now. Um, those trees have since been removed. They were hazardous, dead, falling apart, laurel oaks on property line. So that's what the um, state statute ordinance allowed for was the, the tree removal there. Um, so we bought the house back in 2017, oh, sorry, 2015, time flies, um, <clears throat> with the intent of at some point um, renovating the home. Um, so when we moved in, being an outdoor living and what I do, we uh, went ahead and, and put the pool in and did the outdoor living on the house. We've gone through multiple renditions of uh, how to renovate the home 
And in this particular case, what, we're, what we finally settled on and looking to do is some of the pictures that you'll see here in a minute. But we're trying not to just do the big old box, the South Tampa box. I'm on a street right now where I got four going up next to me. So what we're trying to be is a little bit more sensitive to the neighborhood and go with a mid-century modern appeal. So what we're trying to do is be able to build the new addition to the house so that we can then move into that addition of the house and then go ahead and renovate the existing residence that you currently see up there. So we're trying to do it in the two-step right now. Huh? We're currently a 2-2 two -two and we're looking to expand our family soon. So that's kind of the need for the renovation as well. Um, we looked at uh, expanding to the west, um, but we decided that was the best usable space of lawn that we actually actually had left that we wanted to keep for kids and dogs and usable space over there. And it just kind of worked with how everything flows with the backyard and the pool and all that. So that's why we're asking for this. The one rarity that we have that is uh, only a few of us have is we back up against the school. So we have no other neighbors besides our east and west. Um, so with that being said, as you can see to the front of the house. So right now we have a one story old school ranch, um, still has good bones and that's what we're looking to work with. So the, the intent is that the garage roof would be removed and we would then go two stories. And then at that point, what we're looking to do is go two stories back and reduce that rear yard setback. So we can get that full addition there. <clears throat> Um, this is looking at it from the school, so this kind of gives you a better picture. We're still 40 feet away from the school at that point. Um, any other vegetation is vegetation that we have planted since we purchased the home. So the whole rear of the property line is fishtail palms that are now mature. So the root zones aren't impacted by anything that we're doing. And then from there, this is just, you know, ultimately what something of the sort uh, that our finished product should look like where we have the angled roofs with the two homes eventually becoming the one after we go through all the renovations. That is it. Okay. That completes your presentation this evening. For now. Great. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak about this petition tonight? Come on up. Same drill. Name, address. Confirm you've been sworn. You'll have three minutes. Confirm that I've been sworn. I'm uh, Marshall Santi. I'm at 3621 West Palmyra, which is actually two homes away from him. I'm on the corner. Um, I don't have a problem with what he's doing. Um, he, everything they do is very, very nice. Uh, they've remodeled a little bit of the house when they bought it and it looks great. Um, the setbacks, uh, as I understand, it was 20 feet before on the back. Now it's 12. Uh, she so did say that, but that, that's incorrect. Okay. I think she just that's for, it's a, it's for a corner setback, the front interior. Uh, okay, but even at 10, uh, we have an alleyway there in the back, which is never used by the school. And that separates us from, it's actually, I think it used to be um, De Leon, I think it is, in the back, and then it was closed at one time. I've been there 44 years, so um, any improvement on the property is great uh, to be able to do that, and uh, I have no objection to what they're doing. Great. Thank you. I like how you... Uh said you've been sworn right out of the box. <laughs> Say again? I like how you said you were sworn right out of the box. It helps a lot of people forget that piece. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak about the petition this evening? Thank you, Marshal. Uh, seeing none, um, any questions by the board? Go ahead. Um, it's a really big expansion for wanting um, these setbacks. Have you thought about, you know, adjusting the building footprint so you wouldn't have to be here today? We, we did look at it from different, several different aspects. So, I mean, we have a backup plan if, you know, today doesn't go the way we're looking. But when it comes to the side yard reduction, um, we're looking to match up with the current garage walls that are there. Um, 
So when the house was built in the 40s, the original house, uh, the house went through a major renovation in the 90s. And at that time, uh, the garage was a carport. And so because it was grandfathered into some of the guidelines at that time, they were able to become an actual garage at that point. So that's where the reduced uh, setbacks came in from somewhere in the 90s when it was permitted and allowed at that time. Um, so all we're trying to do with the east side set, uh, reduction is just line ourselves up in a straight line at that point. That as far as the rear, um, we're looking for that depth uh, just for that added extra space, obviously. So that was my next question was, um, it looks like the, um, the existing garage is in line. Um, so do we still need to provide, I mean, are we, it's already existing, so we, that, but it was never grandfathered in in terms of an uh, approved um, change. Whatever you approve today would be for the addition only. All right, okay. Okay, any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Um, you have five minutes for rebuttal. No rebuttal at this time. Just uh, appreciative of you guys and happy Valentine's Day. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. With that, I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. I move that the variance request for case BRB 23-12 for property located at 3613 West Palmyra Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 10 feet and the east side yard setback from 7 feet to 5.5 feet with an encouragement for eaves and gutters. Based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that um, the proposed uh, addition is going to be in line with the current location of the garage um, and therefore that practical difficulty doesn't result from the actions of the applicant. Um, the proposed addition um, is generally uh, you know, constructed to be to help with the flow of the house um, and uh, this property is, is a little bit unique because there is a large separation um, in the rear of the house between um, it and the property immediately behind it. Thank you, Ms. Decker. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? All right. Your petition passes. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you very much. Wednesday. You too. Do you want any yesterday? Yes, I, I do have the one if you have any additional. Okay, before we leave, we got to do the vote. We got to do uh, elections. So, uh, Does he said some tree assessment form. Is that the one? Yeah, it's the tree. Um, These are the assessment. Ms. Johnson Blaise, do, do they, you wait, know trees, when my time on this board I, I, runs? Yes, when I'm trees have to be really barred out? I don't think that's a list were, of that. I do this not. Is, this is from the, okay. um, the arborist. They, they're, they're, they're right, so. I, and do we also know when, so I think uh, what he wants. when Mr. Murphy is going to be confirmed on the board as opposed to. Uh, an alternate? I do not have answers to either of those okay. questions. Um, right. No, it's not up now. I think it, I think I expire in like, uh, I think my term expires either later this year or early the following. But then you continue to serve until your placement is appointed? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, obviously, we want to make sure the board has enough people. Um, and I don't know when, when the time frame is, so that'll be up to you guys. But I, I, for purposes of elections, I want to make sure that if we're going to do anything like that, that I'm actually going to be on the board. And if not, then we should definitely put somebody else in this position. Now, you are current vice chair, correct? No? Who's our current vice chair? Yes, I am. Yeah, you are. 
don't deny it. Yeah. Um, but but if you are uh, if you are expecting to uh, have to roll off the board um, middle of this year or later this year, it doesn't make sense um, for you to serve in that or another officer position, I guess. Um, Where do you know we're going to end up going? Yeah, cool, cool. Um, okay, so uh, how do you want to go about doing this? We need, do we need nominations? Yes, we'll chat with the vice president and get nominations and approval and we'll get nominations for this year and next year. Okay, um, well, can we start with, does anyone want to serve as vice chair? And chair, I mean, if somebody wants to do it, let's consider that. I would be happy to serve vice chair of the committee. Okay. I don't, I mean, I served on this board for 11 years prior to coming back on. Right. Um, I, I still haven't you know, been my feet wet, so to speak. So, okay. Well, um, I'm happy to serve too. Do you want to be chairman again? I will serve as chairman again, but honestly, I mean, the. The hardest part about being chair is doing all the reading and making sure, I mean, I'm making sure you're here all the time, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, keeping in mind that the chair does not move, does not make motions. Um, so we need to make sure that we have the folks on who are not chair to make the motion. If you want to be chair, I'm cool with that. So then what I would propose, if we want to do a vice chair, um, is I would propose uh, and nominate Miss um, Walrath to serve as vice chair. We'll start there. Does that sound good? I'd be happy to serve. Okay. Anyone else want to nominate? Well, you see, this um, is the so, problem. So as an alternate, I can't serve as vice or chair. That's the problem. Oh, really? And, and oh, that's chair right. would be an email. Yeah. Right? Says who right. Who yeah. Who well, that's up to our. Uh, but we have to do, we're, we're probably late for elections, like we were supposed to do it last time. So we no, it was in the first meeting in February. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So According we're not. To your rules. Terrific. Awesome. That's but I am making notes for the, some of the things that you're discussing that we need to probably address in the rules of procedure. That, um, oh, that. So Term, terms and yeah. alternately things like that. Yeah. So. Right. Terrific. Um, okay. Uh, so, does anyone else want to nominate anyone else for vice chair, or we could take a vote on that? I mean, do you want to just close the nominations on Ms. Right. Walrath? And if, if that's cool, then we're good. Congratulations. All right. <laughs> uh, that said, then I will nominate Senator to serve as chair. Does anyone else want to make a nomination? Okay. Done. Close, okay. close the nominations on that? Yeah. On that okay. Done. By acclamation. Okay. Congratulations. Cool. <laughs> Terrific. Good job. And then you're up next. <laughs> what do we finally get you? That's what you could say. Why are you still an alternate? Um, because the people at the city don't respond very well. Because they're slow. Well, yeah, it took me over a year and a half to find I know. It's like, like we're desperate to get people on here. And, and then you get there and you're I was going to say, it took me about a year after I was asked asking? to join the board after presenting on it. Uh, you know, I have and then Do you have a second email? email to say, hey, I don't, but that's a great question. Uh, Jane, do we have um, parking validation somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. So, funny story, remember the presenter? 